Hi, I'm Tim. I work for Manaki Whenua Lanka Research in New Zealand. Let me take you on a journey with geographical videos and longitudinal compression and a story about my experience with this exciting new technology. What is the problem to solve? Spatial data does not only present a constant in space, it includes the thing that is fundamental to our very nature, change. How? How can we throw change? To summarize, I want to briefly explain the motivation for WMSV. Then I'd like to show you a few proof of concept applications, the first of which was the visualization of our national possum model. Furthermore, I attempted visualizing temperature change in the Antarctic in 2015. The challenges of that data led me to a visually nicer data set. The Himawari satellite takes a photo every 10 minutes, which I downloaded a sample of uh, and concatenated to videos. There are more challenges that I'll get into. Meanwhile, I'll try to summarize the story of WMSV and briefly cover some concepts and considerations. And finally, propose one or even more standards. First, I want to ask why. Visualization of temporal data over time, such as weather patterns, forecasts, uh, bushfires, storms, or different properties such as soil profiles, traveling through depth in the ground, water, or animal bodies could really help us see what is going on in very interesting ways across different domains. In general, with what we perceive as time, we can visualize at least one additional dimension of data, whether this is in 2D or in 3D, or on a screen, or potentially in virtual reality. For now, let's start with 2D maps and data over time in an interactive way. WMS Time is a standard in the web mapping service framework. It is a standard which enables open source maps to consider time as simple map tiles. Here you can see an example using WMS Time and PNG images. Uh, as you may be able to see, we are making 110 uh, requests here for one layer and one extent. I don't think I need to explain why this is a problem. There is no transition between frames and no server-side filtering between images possible. Not only latency, but also decoding compressed images is costly. Uh, so why not have a stream of images coming in as a video and being decoded as a stream? Video technology has been researched and improved upon over decades now, and we have, a very, we have very efficient video formats, both in terms of speed and file size. Why visualize raster data? A lot of data is sourced as raster, aerial, satellite, or UV imagery, to name just a few. Models can be less costly to process using rasters, uh, since some operations are costly to calculate with, with big data and as vectors. Let me show you the national possum model. I won't go into too much detail of the model itself. The focus here is on the video map technology. Uh, as you can see, there is a navigable map, map showing the videos versus map tiles. Um, the extent and positions of video tiles are shown accurately on screen. Regional council areas and their statistics are shown. There is a slider to advance time in a live preview. How did we do this? Initially, with the possum model, uh, we, we replaced all the image elements with HTML5 video elements. In OpenLayers 2 at the time, DOM rendering was used, which was the only approach possible then. DOM rendering is expensive and was later replaced by Canvas and WebGL rendering, both of which are hardware accelerated. An HTML canvas element enables developers to do filtering and, and advanced image manipulations, which are not, while not having to worry about all the graphics challenges. My namesake, Tim Schaub, put together a proof of concept, which I learned was inspired by a Macbox post previously. 
Uh, this was after we did the national possum model. Here is the example we, he put together. Uh, uh, you can see how this kind of visual could not be achieved with downloading separately compressed images as frames or with DOM rendering uh, with this kind of performance and at an angle like that. I'll let you appreciate this for a few seconds. I tried other data, the remotely sensed Antarctic surface temperature from 2015. However, the data was not really suitable. So w WMSV is not great for visualizing data that has little commonality. Also, some caching, uh, some caching should be done. Video tiles and compos compositing them on the server may be the way to go. Cropping, composing, and padding works. <coughs> FFmpeg and complex filters make this possible at fast speeds. Challenges. Uh, transparent videos are not fully supported at the time I checked. Uh, with the Antarctic data, I wrote a client-side filter uh, that uses green, the green channel as transparency, which of course only works if you are not using a channel in your data visualization. Layers on top of video layer are problematic uh, without DOM rendering. Synchronizing Visio tiles is, is really a great challenge. The browser APIs are not reliable enough for this purpose. I tried a lot of things. Having the videos pre-computed and sitting on the server as simple files was best for now. Downloading partial content then gets handled by the web server. I spent a lot of time optimizing the synchronization. In the end, double buffering and frame caching seems to work best and surprisingly also seems okay in terms of memory use. Performance and stability are challenging. However, having tabs open for a while can crash the browser. At Phosphogy 2013, my demo failed because I had opened it in the wrong browser. <laughs> I've been implementing a dynamic WMSV that worked with any bounding box so that videos can be encoded on the fly. This solved the solves the synchronization problem but increases the load on the server and server-side filtering such as blending can slow things down and not to forget image loading. FFmpeg supports CPU rendering, but it makes the video quality worse. There, there may be faster video encoding options, libraries, or similar that can solve these problems. Encoding one video and streaming it was not the bottleneck, though. It is the image tile delivery from a WMS time. So if, you, if, one, could, uh, if one could use low-level code and access the rest of the data with indexes directly, I believe the on-the-fly delivery could be the way to go. So now, more to the story. Uh, in 2012, uh, Landcare was involved with the Possum model. I remember taking, talking to a colleague about this exciting new HTML5 technology, video and canvas, describing how these elements behave like images in many ways. Uh, in the conversation, the idea of using video tiles came up. Robert coined the phrase longitudinal compression. A few hours of progressive working later, I had crafted uh, some, uh, some map tiles, some video map tiles uh, from the possum model raster data and combined some on a small grid in my browser, playing the videos at the same time. The tech got some interest, however, mostly used my free time. Uh, when I presented in uh, MWMSV in 2013, I was talking to the open layers guys, and Tim Schaub came up with the post-compose idea and building it as an extension. There was motivation to present again here today. Uh, now to standards. I have a long and skeptical journey with standards. It began when my boss gave me the immense job of reading the WMS spec and later punished me with the even more convoluted WFS2 standard. <laughs> At the time, as you can imagine, I did not appreciate standard much. However, having spent time with WFS3 at a hackathon and getting annoyed yet again with different power plugs in different countries, <coughs> I realized that standards are important. So I spent a bit of WMS time, pun intended, 
I hacked it behind my WMSV and learned to appreciate uh, the ISO time notation standards since they are even implemented in JavaScript. I had a look at the time range spec in WMS time and decided to implement that in my dynamic WMSV. Uh, and here's the, the time spec. You can find the details uh, and how to interpret them online. Uh, more that could be standardized. Um, frame rate, video formats, encoding options, uh, filter spec, all this as extensions or as core. So more on streams. If you're not asleep yet, <laughs> if you're not asleep yet, this might have helped. <laughs> uh, uh, more on the story. Finding, finding good example data is more difficult than I thought. I was not happy with what I had to show, so I found the Himawari satellite imagery, where, which you can see in a minute. Uh, as an aside, you could imagine that you could make a zoomable, panable, NK video possible with this tech. Uh, satellite video feeds could provide live coverage of world events such as natural disasters. Weather forecasts are shown in everyday TV. All this and more could be visualized with remotely sensed or model raster data in WMSV. So here the promised Himawari footage as a web app and using video tiles. Um, getting them to synchronizing like this was a major challenge. Uh, and here a 1080p slice of it. As you can see, the weather is nicely visible here. Uh, just a couple of days ago, I got a dynamic version of the Himawari videos going where I simply crop a high resolution video on the fly. It basically projects a portion of the video for display and could stream at five times the speed of the video. Uh, this possibly works. <laughs> I don't know. Looks like it might be working. So here you see that it's dynamically generated um, because the seconds are advancing. Uh, there's no escape button. <laughs> oh, there. Okay. okay, that's all right. Anyway, you can try it out. It's a I don't have the address on screen today. Uh, but yeah. Could I left it open? No, no. Okay. I left it open. Uh, it doesn't matter. Okay. It's okay. <laughs> uh, so, coming to the conclusions. Uh, video streaming is fast. And image fetching is slow. Uh, tiles are good for servers, and dynamic uh, is better for clients. Finding data without errors is still hard. Hybrid caching seems the way to go. Composing, cropping uh, existing videos on the server uh, works well. Uh, what was the problem statement from the beginning? Change. It's what we want to see. Change is what WMSV can show. So consider WMSV as something on your radar. Thank you. And I open to questions. Thanks, Tim. Uh, really interesting. Um, questions from the audience? Yeah, hi. Um, is this uh, like... Uh, if you already implemented that, then is that accessible at the moment through open layers or something like that? Yeah, I thought this question might come up. It's not accessible at the moment, uh, but I'm planning to make it accessible, uh, at least on my account. Yeah. 
Yeah. And sort of what, what are you targeting a version of open layers to is I'm assuming it's incorporating in open layers, is that right? Or is it gonna be uh, a separate? Well it's gonna be an extension yeah. uh, of open layers. Yeah. If anything. Well, I already created a, an extension. Uh, but it's I wouldn't say I'm not proud of that code because it's all messy. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, yeah, I'll, I'll have to clean it up a bit to, to publish it. Any other questions? Over here. Yeah, hi, thanks, uh, great presentation. Uh, I, I'm just uh, interested to know, and I might be showing my ignorance here a little bit, but um, how are you generating the, the uh, video tiles on the server? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, how, so. How are, you how, do you, how are you generating the uh, videos? So, so is, it, is it tiles or it's it's more of a video? So, with, with so I did many different ways. <laughs> so first, I I built a pyramid from the uh, from just the JPEG images or the imagery, uh, the image files. Uh, so I built first. I built a pyramid with uh, Map Server and Map Cache, uh, and then I simply had the different times as different layers, and then I just concatenated those to videos, uh, and just basically hacked Map Server to to serve up um, videos instead of images, just with a proxy in front of it, um, and then uh, with the dynamic WMS V, uh, I did uh, implement like an FFmpeg filter that. Um, so that there's a filter spec on, on the FFmpeg uh, website. You can look it up. It's, it's a bit complicated, but uh, it's, it's actually OK. <laughs> um, yeah, so and then that was the dynamic. And then, the, then I did the, the sort of hybrid approach with the caching uh, and also dynamic generation uh, by, first I tried um, composing the, the video tiles. Uh, but that had a problem, so, uh, but it was just a superficial problem, I think, uh, that, you know, just me misinterpreting the documentation. Uh, but I think, uh, but the speed was actually good to compose them, uh, the different tiles onto one video. So you could actually stream one video to the client um, quite nicely. Um, uh, better than trying to synchronize on the client, yeah. Right, cool. Any other questions? Over here. Hi, sorry. So the video that you showed before was that like in the like you could drag that that globe or whatever it is around. What what was that video of, or was it like a three D model that you overlaid those videos? Uh, it was just a video of the uh, the images, and uh, I created a a two thousand five hundred by two thousand five hundred. Uh, video, and then I just simply uh, crop it on the server on the fly, and that actually works quite quickly. But then you deliver less data, and it's, it still comes as a stream. And you know the browser then handles all the um, decoding and playing. So, for example, in that video, could you like drag it around? For example, like the cube, like would well, that be not usable at this in stage, that stage? Actually, uh, I tried doing that in the last couple of days. Um, I had the tiling idea first because I thought it would be too costly to generate on the fly, but actually the on the fly works quite well with the hybrid approach. Cool, really good.